Why do you read the leader? Uh, it's a piece of paper, you know, pay our activity fee for it. I think it's a pretty good deal. It's pretty newsworthy. It tells about the campus and stuff. Uh, campus information. Um, once in a while I have a piece in it. Because it's informative, interesting, and uh, contemporary. I'm Randy Gerald, and I'm Ken Obertebessing, and this is The Leader, Profile of a College Newspaper, a three-part series showing the evolution, organization, and issues involving Fredonia State's college newspaper. In our first part, we'll be taking a look at The Leader from a historical perspective. The Leader has a rich history going nearly as far back as the college itself. The first normal leader was published in 1893. The publication had trouble obtaining funding and suspended operations the following year. They started up again three years later and officially became the college newspaper in 1916. The 20s saw the normal leader move to a big newsprint from the old, small magazine type. The 30s brought with it the Great Depression, but even with economic hardships, the normal leader continued to improve. It had a print format similar to that of the New York Times. Photos first began to appear and writers began to use the journalistic inverted pyramid style of writing, that is, putting important information first. Also, the paper switched from a monthly to its current weekly format. The 1940s brought the dark clouds of war on the world, and those clouds had their effect on the newly named Fredonia State Teachers College and its paper, now just the leader. There were stories on the war refugees in England, and how they spent their Christmas in those trying times. In 1943, a young staff writer named Margaret Vallone went to school in a class that had but 13 men. Vallone explains the effects of the war years on her schooling. It would keep track of the alumni, you know, the boys that had graduated from Fredonia and where they were. And, uh, of course, a lot of them that were in school left to go into the service, so all their classmates were writing to them. And, I remember taking an exam on um, the day of the invasion, June 7th, and I put all my answers on the wrong side of the paper, and so she didn't give me a name. My answers were right, but I had them on the wrong side, and both my brothers were in the invasion, so I'm sure my mind wasn't on my history test. One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, seven the fifties brought Bobby Sox and rock and roll. The leaders show the beginning of a great growth and expansion here in Fredonia, while the college began to drift away from Old Main and onto its current location. The paper ran a full-page ad for Chesterfield cigarettes on the back cover. With the sixties came John F. Kennedy, the Beatles, and Vietnam. This time of change was very prevalent in the leader. As is the case now, nuclear war was most feared by college students. The Cuban Missile Crisis brought banner headlines in 1962. Enrollment was increasing and there was a great housing crisis with 30% of the students living in tripled rooms. The bulk of the current campus was built at this time and the college assumed its current title, the State University College at Fredonia. The 70s were a transition from the controversial 60s to the me decade. The leader became more national in scope. Doug Fenton of the Evening Observer was leader editor in 1977. Fenton and his staff took a stand when the Watergate issue came to Fredonia. When John Dean came to speak to Fredonia, at Fredonia, sponsored by the uh, Cultural Events Commission, and we took a stand, uh, we felt that he shouldn't be paid uh, to speak. Uh, he's, in other words, he's making money off of, of Watergate, something that he was you know, convicted of, and in court and, and tried and sentenced for so we, we thought that was wrong. We took a stand against that. The young 80s brought us new music, new issues, and the leader got the fever. And suddenly there was all this uproar and everything. And I will admit that the articles I wrote were as provocative and controversial as I could make them. But I just had not anticipated the kind of response I was going to get out of a student body who are the student body that's generally called so apathetic. I got flack last year, and uh, uh, in fact, I'm glad to see flack because that shows people are thinking. Next time, we'll look at the leader and how it's organized. I'm Randy Gerald. And I'm Ken Over to Best Thing.
What sections do you read? Front page, just senior, you know, editorials and opinions, and classified. Oh, that's the whole thing. I flip through it. I just read uh, um, record reviews mostly. Oh, the comics. I'm Ken Obertabessing. And I'm Randy Gerald. And this is The Leader, profile of a college newspaper. And this part will look at how The Leader's staff puts its paper together. Leader Editor-in-Chief Randy Woodbury explains how he got his job. It doesn't take very long to become an editor of The Leader. To become the editor of The Leader may take a little bit longer. As editor, Randy is in charge of many different departments. What are they? There's the arts department the sports department, the photography department, the news department, and the editorial department. And of course, the people that put it all together in terms of advertising, the advertising department, and the production department. The managing editor is Mike Danahy. He talks about his undefined job. Mainly in charge of the office. I'm in charge of the equipment, ordering supplies. And that's about as far as it goes, as far as it's been described. but. Um, just as any other board member does, I, I'm involved in policy decisions and I like to keep myself involved in the news department especially, uh, doing writing and, and talking about stories and stuff. The general news is a very intricate part of the paper. That makes the news editor's job very important. The leader's news editor is Kathy Zimmerman. She talks about her duties on the paper. General assignment, um, <laughs> editing when it comes in and then it goes to the copy editor, I go through it. Um, deciding um, no, the editor-in-chief uh, usually what the main story is going to be. At a college newspaper, many features and stories out of the norm of a regular newspaper are important. The arts department is a very important part of the leader. Arts editor Nick Tate explains his department. The arts for each individual editor, who's, who's been, for the different arts editors, they've been different things. Uh, what I think arts is anything that includes music, uh, writing, visual art, uh, and anything else in between. The bottom line of a newspaper is how much cash it can generate to stay in operation. At one time, the leader could barely keep its head above water financially. That is not the case now as the paper has become almost self-sufficient. Advertising has done the trick as leader ad manager Martin Lefevre explains. I'm bringing a lot of cash so that we can afford to put out this kind of paper we put out. Otherwise, it would be this flimsy little thing. Reporters at The Leader are students, and as is the case with any student newspaper, reporters are prone to errors in spelling and punctuation. A copy editor is needed to go over and correct these mistakes before they get in the paper. Leanne Fallendorf is The Leader's copy editor. It's to read over the copy that's been um, submitted by the various reporters and the editors, and to check for grammatical errors, for style, there's a certain writing style that has to be followed, there's an AP style book, and to look for clarity and conciseness, you know, that's the newspaper style, it's right, concise, short sentences, um, to make sure that the lead is strong and that the following um, paragraphs follow in a clear turn of thought, and that if it's a new story, if it's an inverted pyramid, and if it's a feature, just to make sure that it, it makes sense. The sports department is an important part of any college paper. Students are interested in the scores of key intercollegiate games, intramurals, and regional professional sports. The leader's sports editor is Ken Needla. Also going right along with sports action is the photography in the paper. Jim Shans is the leader's photography editor. Making sure all the events that the editors request covered, make sure they get covered by one of my photographers, and then... Until Sunday night, nothing else, basically. And then Sunday night, production night, go wild in the dark room. As I wrote my letter of intent, I feel that the picture in the paper is like the most dynamic part of the newspaper. I mean, when you open up the uh, newspaper, the first thing you see is either a big photograph or a big ad. You know, you don't immediately see the copy. You know, the, the uh, picture will either draw you to the copy or it'll just, like, turn you off. Maybe you won't read the story if it's a crummy picture. All the board members or editors at the leader are paid positions. The staff is volunteer. They meet during the week to decide their stories and work from 1 o'clock Sunday afternoon till 6 o'clock Monday morning putting the paper together. It is then taken to Westfield to be printed and is on the street by 1 o'clock Monday afternoon. Next time, we'll take a look at the controversy surrounding the leader and its staff. I'm Randy Gerald. 
And I'm Ken over to Bessing. Do you think the news is slanted at all or opinionated? Well, it's definitely from a student's point of view, you know. That's how they do it. No, objective. Very. They're often pretty slanted. Well, controversy is what keeps a college paper alive. I'm Rudy Gerald, and I'm Ken Obertebessing, and this is The Leader, Profile of a College Newspaper. In this part, we'll examine some of the controversial people and issues that have made The Leader more popular, and also the subject of a great deal of criticism. Last year's leader brought the debate up to its height, and much of the fur was flying in the direction of Martin Lefevre. Lefevre is now ad manager, and there has been some questions raised as to whether it was voluntary. Uh, last year when I went from arts editor to managing editor, uh, rumor was going around, well, they bumped him up so he'd shut up. You know, <laughs> I like to joke about that sort of stuff. But that's really not true. I'm the fever. I'm not the leader. You know, I'm just one of the, the cogs in this piece of machinery you've got upstairs in the campus center. I'm taking a different voice this year. I'm, I'm not so much into it. Well, I created sort of a persona of the paranoid schizophrenic, you know, in print, a journalist, a journalist, you know, on bourbon, just ready to flip out at any minute. And there were times last year where I really was that person, and to an extent, uh, because if you spend 24 hours a day in this office, it'll happen to you. Uh, especially if you're eating on the meal plan and you don't like where you're living and you just drink all day long, you know, and you still try to do your job. But basically, when it gets right down to it, uh, I'm, I've got a slightly different voice this, this year, and I, I don't think that's going to happen again. Uh, if it does, it does, but I'm not, I never try to do it intentionally or anything, just, just for the sake of causing a ruckus. Sometimes it makes it tough because I'm primarily a journalist, and with all that stardom crap going around, it does make it difficult because uh, you can't just walk into some place and be a reporter. You walk into some place and you are, oh, he's that guy from the leader. Student Association President Rick Picarazzi talks about last year's movement to censor the leader. I don't, there was never, ever a thought of censoring the leader. I would never, ever think about it. It would, it's just totally out of my realm. I think they, sometimes they look for controversy, but all papers do that. That's their job. You know, they, they had a boring, uh, article nobody would read the paper and writers like Marty Lefevre when he was in there there was a lot of controversial issues but the reader interest in the leader greatly increased during that time. Students in the campus center were asked how they feel about their school's newspaper. And that's what the paper is for to voice your opinion. I like to see my friends and stuff on it. Tell us what happened over the last week or so. Not always it's the most objective paper. Editor Randy Woodbury talks about students. And I think we make an attempt to print every letter to the editor so there is no, if the paper's one-sided, everybody has, we don't, we definitely do not, do not get the last word. And what about the voting rights issue? We just went down and talked to the election commissioner, Dan Larson, and he, he said things which were outrageous. He knew the interview was on the record, and he said the students don't vote by reason, they vote after they've had a few nickel loans, things like that. Now that, that is just simply how the power of telling the truth can get things motivated. Another controversy faced by the leader this year was a story written on the spiritualist colony in Lilydale. Lynn Amish was a member of a documentary crew denied permission to shoot because of the story. She explains why. A painting a picture that's just not accurate and making a lot of judgment without fact as a basis went there for one healing session, you know, to view one healing session. Does that make her an authority on Lily Dell, you know, make her an authority on spiritualism? They were granted permission to print an objective piece. This is not in any way an objective piece. You know, and it's just the whole thing was done, to, you know, in my opinion, in a very underhanded manner. I don't think that's the way media people should operate. I think we should be working for each other, not against each other. Lilydale reporter Leanne Fallendorf counters. If they're ashamed of anything that happened that I covered, you know, that I covered it just what I saw, I wrote exactly what I saw, and if that makes them nervous that other people know about that, then there must be something wrong with what they're doing. But I didn't really uh, know that they were doing this kind of thing, so, it, you know, I knew they were doing it, but I didn't realize that, they, that it would not have this kind of effect. But that's the uh, media competition, I suppose. Randy Woodbury sums up the leader's philosophy this way. We try to make the news provocative, but it's, it's, it's accurate. You know, if, if the truth is provocative, then so be it. 
I'm Ken Obertebessing. And I'm Randy Gerald. This has been The Leader, profile of a college newspaper. We would like to thank Randy Woodbury and the Leader staff for their cooperation in making this program.